Hello, everyone. Welcome to 360 Degrees Excellence, where we believe everyone can achieve all around success. Today, I'm going to be having a conversation with Mrs. Ibuku Ogunshino, and we're going to be talking about faith and mental health. About two weeks ago, WHO celebrated World Mental Health Day. And I saw some star green statistics. Take, for example, about 1 billion people in the world have mental health disorder. Mm. Every year, about $1 trillion is mm. lost, you know, because of depression, because of suicide and anxiety. Yeah. So we also have a lot of other staggering statistics. So for example, every 40 seconds, one person commits suicide. Mm. So we're talking about a serious problem here. But we must also understand that, you know, stigmatization is wrong. We must try as much as possible to discourage people from stigmatization. So today we're talking about the role of faith. What can faith do? And we know that um, faith can do a lot of things. So apart from faith, we also know there are other things that can help people that are really going through this serious problem. So we're going to be talking about that today. And apart from that, we're also going to be talking about career. We're going to be talking about love and relationship, which Mrs. Ogunshino likes to talk about. So without wasting time, let's dig in. So the first question I'm going to be asking is from my guest. I want her to tell us about herself, what she does, where she lives, and every other thing she would like to share with us. Over to you, Mrs. Ogunshino. Oh, wow. Um, good morning all the way from Barry in Canada. Thank you so much, my brother. It's really nice seeing your face again after all these years. Eh? <laughs> and thank you so much for what you do. Um, well, to go straight to the point, my name is Ibuku Mugushina. I'm a mom of four with my first born in medical school and my last born in grade five. And um, I'm married to a family physician by, um, by the name of Dr. Ulushola Ogunshina. We've been married for over two decades already. And um, professionally, I'm a registered psychotherapist and also a Christian counselor. And I live here in Canada. I've been here for over a decade. <laughs> and well, that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> Thank you. In interesting. You didn't tell us that you published uh, four books. You're also a published author. Oh. Very interesting. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can, you. can you tell us? Can you tell us the name of the four books you published? Oh, thanks. Um, my first two books were actually published in South Africa. All my books were self-published. And the first two books are Christian nonfiction and their titles are The Joy of Being Married. And uh, the second was, um, the title is The Joy of Being You. While the last two were written in Canada and they are Christian fiction and their titles are Joy's Blessings and A Borrowed Love. And thank you for reminding me. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're welcome. You're welcome. The joy of being married. And mm -hmm. you've been married for over a decade. No, and I can over two decades. <laughs> over, two, over two decades. Almost okay, okay. two and a half decades. Okay. Almost two, two and a half decades. Two decades, two decades. More than 20 years. You've been yeah. married for more than 20 years. More than 20 yeah. years. You know, yeah. I, was, yeah. I, got I, got, I got confused there. You know, sometimes decade, I forgot that it's about uh, 10 years. 10 years, just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. And, you know, the first book you publish is about marriage. And that will tell us that you really have passion for, mm. you know, marriage. Because sometimes the first book people publish text tells a lot about what they are passionate about. Yes. So I just want to ask you this question, you know, mm -hmm. in three words, or, mm -hmm. or let me say maximum of one sentence, can you just tell us the secret of, <laughs> of good marriage or happy marriage? Can you just tell us? I know it's a difficult one. It's a difficult <laughs> one, you know. I just uh, well, <laughs> I was looking at you when you were asking the question. I wish I could just give you that ingredient. That secret. <laughs> but actually, there is no secret. Mm. You know, I, like you said, yes, um, I'm a couples therapist. And um, I jump up when it comes to talking to people about um, their relationships and, you know, how to improve their love affair and the uh, affairs, in, you know. So my, well, what I would say about improving your marriage or having a successful marriage is the ability to always aim, 
engage in a self-reflection. Mm. You see, when I say self-reflection, self-reflection is, is a serious thought about your character, your actions and your motives. So in order for you to, have, to want to have a successful marriage, it will be time for you to actually look inwardly and ask yourself, what do I really want? You know, what do I want out of this relationship? And when you ask yourself that question, that means you're engaging in a deep self-reflection. That means you're asking yourself, what do I need to change in myself? Not what do I, what do I want my husband to change in himself? You know, the only person you can change is you. So when you work on changing yourself, your husband will see the changes, the positive changes. You know, you cannot hide those. And that will help you to also change him indirectly. And little by little, you start to enjoy the fruits of a successful marriage. Because you're learning to probably respect him more, probably watch the way you are addressing, probably watch the things that he complains about. And once you can engage in a deep reflection, that means you're becoming a new person. And we are all learning every day. So well, that would be my secret. Just learn to ask yourself on a daily basis, what, what can I change about myself? What can I do better in my marriage? How can I take care, better care of myself and even of my husband so that he can also do likewise? I, hope I, I like that. Good. Yeah, I, I like that. You know, it's reminded me of a quote. Be the change you want to see. In it's all world. about that. In exactly. the world, in your marriage, in your career, at office, be the change you want to see. And you see, uh, I also remembered what um, uh, Ruth Graham said. He said mm -hmm. ma she said, marriage is to forgive us living together. You know, you know, mm -hmm. I, I can't, you know, I read a book very many years ago, Martin Luther had a wife, you know, mm -hmm. and it was a book about the, uh, the marriage life of different men of God. Like mm. John Wesley, Martin Luther King, and some 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 other uh, people, and that was what she said. Very interesting, and I like what you said. Be the change you want to see. You can't change anybody; you can yeah. only change yourself. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What we what we're talking about today? We're talking about mental health, and, and I came across a study that says that um, uh, depression has skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. You know, during this during this pandemic, you know, and a lot of people might be going through depression. I mean, what advice do you have for them? Maybe somebody watching this and really going through the depression, what advice do you have for such a person or, or anxious about something, one thing or the other? Um, my brother, I won't lie to you. This year, it is indeed a shocking reality that what has happened in this year is unprecedented. Even up till now, some of us have been cocooned at home since March. So you can imagine a lot of people are depressed. They are sad. There's so many people questioning things different, like why? When are they going to find the vaccine? When are things going to be back to normal? If at all, we're going to have the old normal or probably we're going to have the new normal. So all of this, you know, I can imagine people are grieving so many losses, loss of freedom, loss of routine, loss of their jobs, so much they lost their relatives. So I do understand that there's a lot of people that are depressed and sad, you know? And the only thing I can actually say, and don't let me say the only thing, I have two things to say with regards to that. The first thing is, if you happen to be listening or watching this video, I want you to know that no matter what has happened to you, in this year, 2020, I want you to know that there will always be that small light, no matter how dim the light is at the end of the tunnel. We're rooting, that we're praying and we're rooting for you. You know, yeah, as, yeah. As, a, as the body of Christ, we are praying for everyone. We're asking God for to intervene and we're asking God to protect all his children. And that is just on the side. So no matter where you are in all of this, I want you to reach out to someone that you can actually open up to. Because if you don't do that, if you, if you just stay inside and you're depressed, you're sad, you, you, you may be tempted to entertain a lot of negative thoughts. And when you don't take care of those thoughts, we actually call them different cognitive distortions. They may actually take you to a place, you may spiral down to a place where you don't want to find yourself. 
sometimes you may actually ruminate, you may overthink or even catastrophize a lot of things that are going on. And you believe that, oh, wow, this is too much for me. And then that may actually take you to a place where you don't want to be. So instead of just staying at home, being depressed or being sad, I want you to get out. I want you to positively distract yourself. I want you to call on someone someone that you can trust, open up to that person. And as a therapist, there's actually a skill that um, I normally encourage my clients to make use of. And it has, it has actually been helping. It's, it's actually gotten from a, a therapy, um, a DBT, we call it dialectical behavioral therapy skill. And it is known as radical acceptance skill. You know, so that skill is actually gotten from that therapy, dialectical behavioral therapy. So if this is a skill to that will teach you how to embrace what you cannot control. You know, it's it's you are going to radically accept the situation, not because you are um, condoning it, because you don't even we don't have control over what has happened this year. You know, and we're not actually condoning it as well. However, it will give you peace of mind to look at the situation and embrace and accept it radically and then channel your energy into moving on. So if you want to know more about this skill, it is called radical acceptance skill. It's a skill that I make use of. Sometimes when I, when I see things beyond my perspective, beyond my understanding, I cannot even comprehend, I radically accept it. And that does not mean that I'm passive about it. But it means that I want to be able to move on, accept this so that I can channel my energy into something else that will be productive for me. So if you find yourself in this situation, you're depressed, you're sad, please reach out to someone you can trust or make use of that skill. Or also even look for a therapist around you or reach out to your pastor. Ask someone to hold you up and pray for you. And I know that as we agree together, we, I know that very soon, this will soon be, you know, it will belong to the history of the, the Hannahs of Israel. Thank you, excellent. You mentioned that um, such a person could reach out to his or pastor. You yes. know, according to Mayo Clinic, you know, they said that um, religious activity and spirituality has been associated with less anxiety, depression, or even suicide. I mean, can you tell us what makes, you know, such activities powerful? I mean, even your belief system that really uh, make them to have positive effects on our mental health? Um, well, that's, that's really nice. Uh, as a Christian counselor, I love Christian counseling. And I'm also a registered psychotherapist. So you see, whether you make use of psychotherapy or Christian counseling, you meet a client where the clients want to be met, where they are, and then you, have, you help them from there. When clients seek assistance regarding their mental health issues, they want to feel better. They hope to be assisted. So whatever approach you decide to use, but according to that um, um, research by Mayo Clinic, it is true. It is true that um, religion actually or spirituality is actually associated with less anxiety. It alleviates depression. You know, a lot of emotional symptoms or physical symptoms of depression. Why? Because religion gives people something to believe in. There's this, there's this um, it provides a sense of structure. When people come, let's take for example, when people come to see you and they ask you to assist them using Christian counseling from what we do is we work in that moment. Whether it's psychotherapy or even Christian counseling, I always tell my clients, I'm like 50% of the actual work is done in this session. The remaining 50% is done out of the session. So 50% is done when you come for Christian cancer. We'll talk about what's going on. we we'll look at your situation, whether we make use of, uh, whether we pray, whether we make use of some verses in the Bible, we do that. However, the remaining 50% gets done out of therapy. And that's where you either go for your weekly Bible study or you go to church every Sunday or you even do your own worship, praise and worship at home. Or you pray. All of these different facets of Christian cancer Counseling. They help a client to feel better because he, he, he or she knows that there's something that they can fall back on when they are out of the therapist's office. 
You understand? And that's actually, that's one, that, those are the things that really help to elevate all those physical and emotional symptoms of, of anxiety. Is it the Bible verses that you give out to clients to read on when they are anxious? Or is it when they bust into songs of praise, you know, when they feel like the anxiety or the depression is about to rear their ugly heads? All these things to us as Christians, they're just, you know, they're normal things that we're supposed to do. But these things are actually helpful and they help to reduce, they actually help to decrease the overall level of anxiety in a lot of people. You understand? So that's why people always say, oh, wow, yeah, they are, they have also psychotherapy in the, on the other side as well. Whether you make use of CBT or you make use of emotional um, focus therapy, you know, I, 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 helping clients, these also help in their way. The only thing is they actually helped based on what is discussed in the session and probably some assignments and activities you ask the clients to do which gets completed or not completed based on the readiness of the client. So when you look at Christian cancer, Christian cancer actually offers much more than what is discussed in the session. I hope I sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you did. I mean, it's very interesting that you're able to combine, you know, science, because I can also, you know, I can say that is science, you know, knowledge and also the word of God, powerful. You know, people come into you, you know, they have access to two word views and you're able to tell them the best thing, you know, very, very, very interesting. I wanted to ask you a question, but I'm not going to ask you again, you know, let me quickly tell you the question I wanted to ask about. No problem. There was a time, there, there was a time you wrote an article that I saw on Facebook about how you experience racism and how you deal with it. Um, mm -hmm. And um, the reason why I said I don't want you to say a lot is because you already told me, you know, about psychotherapy. And also, I also know that you are a woman of God. That must have assisted you. So, um, it, but do you, do you want to add anything? No problem. First of all, I want to say thank you. <laughs> thank you for reading my blog because you see, I just I write and I post it there once a month, and yeah. I, really, I really feel encouraged when people tell me, "Oh, we read about your article. We did." I'm like, "Eh, are you sure?" You know, so it inspires me to write more. So, Bratoli and Brato say thank you so much. Yeah, so yeah. about that particular incident, I would like to you. It was one of the darkest periods of my life. You know, it was um, it was an act of systemic racism, and like you mentioned, there were so many things that helped me to get better. It could have actually it could have affected my mental health negatively, but I did not allow it because I had to practice what I preach. So what did I do? And I, as a person, as a daughter of God, I asked myself when things happen, I use the moment to actually reflect on my contribution to the situation as well. So that particular period in my life, I looked inwardly and I asked, what did I do wrong? What did I do that I, what did I not do that I was supposed to do? Or to, I, was, I was supposed to have done or I didn't do? What did I say that I wasn't supposed to say, you know? So I actually boiled down the whole fact. I checked the T's, I crossed the I's. It wasn't my fault. It was an act of systemic racism. So mm. what did I do? I went back to God. And I just asked God to give me the strength. I tapped into his grace, you know? And the Lord opened my eyes to let me realize that, girl, this is not my battle. So, and what did I do? I just, I left it in his hands. But I didn't also stop there because even though I left it in the hands of God, there were some negative thoughts that were raining their ugly heads. And I had to use CBT to help myself. There were moments that I'll find myself ruminating over it. You know, not disturbing myself, but I just decided to make use of one or two activities, you know, distract myself. Even I started listening to some worship songs used through podcasts. I started doing things just to positively distract myself, to get myself out of that situation. And to God be the glory, I was able to get myself out of the situation. And when I know that things are whole, God actually, may, even after that incident, God surprised me by opening so many doors for me Please. and looking back now actually I, I asked myself I think I think it was actually a nice time that I went through that situation when I was going through this it was a very difficult period of my life but in retrospect looking back now all I could say is I thank God that I had that experience because it's also it showed me who I do not want to be 
And thank you for asking that question, for yeah. taking me back. <laughs> <laughs> thank God. You know, God allowed it because he knew you could overcome it. And also because God knows you can also use that experience to encourage people that are going through that same problem. Because people might be watching the same thing now and they are going through the same thing. And I'm sure they are going to be encouraged. You know, yeah. I don't know any mental air booster like mm. prayer and the, and the word of God, scripture. Can you just tell us two scriptures, you know, that you that you can recommend to people going through depression or going through or people that oh. are anxious? Brato, see, I'm not a pastor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 but you're, but you're, you're a human of God. <laughs> Don't worry, I was only pulling your legs. You know, my, my go-to, my go-to in the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, is the book of Psalms. I just love that. Because I love the personality of David. He wrote about 73 books in in the book of Psalms, you know. I just love his personality. And I emulate him, you know, Mm. when it comes to when you have problems and you dance, you know. Mm. He danced so much to the extent that God said, this is a man after my own heart, Mm. you know. So my first go-to Bible verse will be found in the book of Psalms, Psalms 46 verse 10. And the that first line that says, be mm. still and know that I have God. Mm. So no matter what you're going through in life, for somebody to tell you to be still, that means that person has that authority to tell you that he is in command. In and we're talking about God. And God is our creator. And he's telling you to be still. What part of be still don't you understand? Is it to be calm? So be, keep quiet, lie dormant, relinquish control to me because I am the I am. So when I when I'm when I find myself disturbed, that Psalm comes, Psalm 46, verse 10, be still and know that I am God. Hmm. It comes to me, and as long as I continue to say it out, I have that peace that flows like the river enveloping me. My second verse is. The, you can find it in uh, Philippians 4, 6. Hmm. That one also, exp- it's also so um, hmm. relatable and it's so clear. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. You know, looking at that verse, you know, we actually commanded to do three, three things. It says, do not be anxious. That means when you feel that your anxiety is on the rise and you are even experiencing panic attacks, remember Philippians 4, 6. Say, do not be anxious. Now, there's a semicolon there. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, that means prepare all your requests. Write them down. All the things troubling you. Now, leading them with thanksgiving. And they now present them to God. So when you remember those things, you know that God is telling you, bring all your worries. Bring all your anxieties. Let me handle. But don't, but now as a child of God, don't just go and say, God, I give it to you. And do them. No. I present it to God with thanksgiving. and say, God, you have this. And I'm handing it over to you. And I know that the God, whose words are yea and amen, will always calm you down exit your expectations and answer your prayers Thank Amen. You. Amen. Powerful, pa- powerful powerful you know that that scripture philippians 4 verse 6 um we shared it this morning with uh, you know during our family devotion and uh, wow. i will never forget you know uh, another bible uh, that i used to have that talks about uh don't worry about anything Pray about everything. I mean, another translation. You know, another, I pa- think that's um, uh, yeah. NLT actually. Yeah, Maybe yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, but I used to have that Bible I misplaced. It said, "Don't worry about anything. Mm. Pray about everything." You know, powerful. You know, and and I realized that in Christ, you know, mm. uh, we have a lot of promises. You know, that mm. one that is uh, coming to my mind is that that what Jesus said said, "Don't let your heart be troubled. Mm-hmm. Believe in God. Believe, Believe also in me." And you also talked about Psalms. I remember the Psalm that talks about why cast down all my soul. Mm. If you're hoping God, you get still praising. Is a lift of your soul. So there are so many Bible verses 
that um, we should Can't keep on down, reading. You know? I, I came across a quote today mm -hmm. by Charles Podgion. You know, somebody shared Charles Podgion's quote and said, okay. say, 50% of fears that Christians mm -hmm. have is because Christians don't read the Bible. That 50% of our fears is just because of that, because we don't read the Bible. And it's very, very important for us to, to read the Bible, you know, because if we, if we don't read the Bible, we just put the Bible, you know, uh, by the bed, we won't really have the benefit, you know. And yeah. Nothing powerful, that powerful. we don't open, you know, nothing that, and you, I remember the, the, the Bible verse that says, study to show thyself up. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. the more you study the word of God, the more you realize that, ah, I have this, you know, mm. these are my benefits, these are the things mm. that I'm entitled to, you know, mm. so why, what, why, why am I scared, you know, mm. why am I bothered when the word of the Lord says this, says that, mm. you know, yeah. so I just tap into it and I'll keep myself calm. <laughs> Absolutely, that is, that is fantastic. Let's, I, I want to ask you this question about mm. career change, no uh, you know, I, <laughs> I, I am I'm aware that uh, you changed your career after uh, age 45. You were in IT and now you're in counseling. I can see that you are passionate about counseling. Can you tell us how and first, why did you change and how? Because people might be watching and say, oh, I'm old, I'm 50, I'm 60. How can I change my career? You know, you know can you tell us, you know, why Thank and how? You. Okay, so why and now? Okay, I mm. like to, I'll answer your questions. Thank mm. you. Oh, yes. Wow. The the why? Uh, number one, I got tired of programming, you know, and then I also realized that um, my calling in life is to give my shoulders to people to lean on, you know. And not only that, I realized that I was created to speak life into relationships and marriages. So. When, when I got that calling, when I was called by God to help people, to listen to people, you know, and that was why I decided to say bye-bye to the high tea world. So truth be told, I got, I got bored. You know, if you're familiar with programming, we're talking about Fortran 77, mm -hmm. we're talking, well, maybe, it's, maybe they don't use it anymore, but then yeah. we program yeah. Visual Basic, we used to program yeah. using COBOL. So I really got tired programming because I'm a people's person. So I was always sitting in front of the computer for almost seven hours in a day. I wasn't enjoying it. And then I realized that I was called, like I said, to help people. And how did I do it? I wish I said I did it by my strength. No, I did not. I did it through the help of God because God opened my eyes to the possibility of being able to still go back to school even after um, after having had for, for, for children, you know, after having crossed over, like you say, 45, you know, after having said, ah, do I, am I still going to be able to read? Yes, I realized that it is possible. So I went back to God and I asked him for direction and he was able to um, put me in the right place in the right time. You know, he was able to open so many doors for me. I was able to reach out to people that put me there. They I actually, they were doing what I wanted to do, you know? So I sought advice and I got the necessary direction, the necessary things that I needed to do to be where I am today and to God be the glory. And I know a lot of people have actually also reached out to me saying, oh, how can we still do it? Oh, it is so easy. Like I did, reach out to someone in that book. And also feel free to reach out to me. You know, whenever, if especially when you find yourself not being fulfilled in your chosen career, maybe you're tired. Maybe it's time for you to make a move. Maybe it's time for you to say, you know what? I think I've done my thing. It's now time for me to do your thing. And he will always answer your prayer request. Absolutely. God is always going to answer us when we ask him to do anything for us. He's a yeah. wonderful God. And we have Jesus, our best friend. Uh, thank you so much. You really blessed me today. I've learned a lot from you. Uh, what is your closing remark for us today? Mm, wow. Thank you. <laughs> First of all, I want to say thank you, Bratosi. I have watched some of your videos. I won't lie to you. You're doing an awesome job. 
Thank you know, you, you. I wish we can all be like you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, <interview people. laughs> I wish you can all be, but no, you, I, that's your calling, you know, yes, and yes. We just, I just want to say thank you for what you do. So what do I want to say? Okay, I think I have to be truthful here. There's so many people that I know that are still a little bit shy with respect to mental health issues. You know, a lot of people are still struggling hard with anxiety, with depression, you know. However, I want you to know that it is for your own benefit to reach out to mental health therapists. I know some of us, we grew up from the school of knowledge or thoughts that we don't wash our dirty linen in public. It's not like that. When you book a session with a therapist, you are actually bind, you know, by an hold of confidentiality. Whatever you discuss with a specialist will remain confidential. The only time confidentiality will be broken is when you have thoughts of wanting to harm yourself or wanting to harm someone else, apart from those two exceptions. Whatever you say will remain between the two of you. And therapists are dear. They are trained to listen to you. You know, my husband always tell me, Buku, how do you do it? I can't listen to people. I said, that's not your calling. You are a family physician. I cannot inject people. (laughs) (laughs) I cannot give people injection. I can't withstand the pain, but you can do it. You know, so this is what I can, this is what some of us signed up for. We're never tired to hear you and we are trained to make use of different modalities and techniques to help you to feel better. So take away that shame reach out to somebody that can help you. Mental health is not easy, I know. However, there is nothing that is difficult for God to do. So that will be my closing remarks. (laughs) Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Ma, for taking time out of your busy schedule to do this interview. I'm I'm grateful, you know, I appreciate you, Ma. You know, we learn from you. And I remember that, Maybe you've forgotten. There was a time you gave me a book. I've forgotten the competition we did when you were in South Africa a long time ago before I wrote my first book, you know, and you gave me a book, you, you know, you, and you were the first person to write a book. And after you wrote a book, I think I published a book, Study Allah also started publishing a book, you know, mm. you, 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 are, you, are, you are like a pace setter and uh-huh. uh, we are looking up onto you. We are looking up onto you and I know God will continue to promote you and your family okay. and continue to help you. Mm-hmm. And what this ministry you have is a powerful one, being able to combine the knowledge, you know, and um, of science and also the spiritual knowledge, you know, you are going places. I'm so oh, grateful wow. for your life, man. <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you so thank much. You, thank you. Thank you so much, my <laughs> thank, brother. Thank you. Thank yeah. You so thank much. you. Yeah. yeah. And also to our viewers, you've had it all from Mr. Fukushino. Get up if you are going through a difficult time. If you're feeling depressed and, and there are signs, you can also read the signs of depression. You know, you can get it on Google. If you read the signs and you know that you're feeling depressed, get help. Mm. Uh, like she said, you can get to an expert psychotherapist or you can also reach out to your pastor. Like I've said, I don't know of any mental booster like the scripture and the Bible. Yes. Then apart yes. from that, there are other things that you can do to boost yes you know, your, your, your mood, I mean, mm. eat good food, eat balanced diet, you know, mm. food that is balanced in, you know, nutrients. Apart yes. from that, sleep well, find sleep time well. to sleep well. Yes. Another thing I want you to do is that learn to relax. Maybe you want to take a walk. Yes. I mean, connect with people, people that will listen to you, try and do that. And also do something in the community, forget about yourself, mm-hmm. you know, serve other people. And as you do that, I tell you that you're going to feel better. And most importantly, keep on praying. Pray. Uh, I, I know that you've learned one or two things from today's discussion. Uh, I want to wish you a wonderful day. See you next time. God bless you. Bye.